Hello again. Last month, I fell foul of YouTube's policy on hate speech and was, of course, suspended for a week. Many people attempting to comment on the posts which I make on this channel have also seen their comments removed for the same reason. I thought I would say a word or two about this, treading very carefully, of course, so that I don't get banned again. I have not only had videos removed from this channel by YouTube, I also see my comments regularly deleted, which means that I cannot reply to points which people raise here. These comments are removed for no earthly reason as I can identify. For instance, I've included the word Zionist and during comments, and these have been whisked away within seconds, presumably by an automatic robot. This is weird because I've been discussing the political nature of Zionism and my detestation of anti-Semitism. I don't think anybody watching this would uh, feel that I was using Zionist in a pejorative term. It seems as though the very words themselves are viewed by YouTube as hate speech. In the description to this video, I attach a link to YouTube's community guidelines, which is what they call their policy on censorship. It sets out very clearly the kind of things uh, liable to get one banned. Some of this is based upon certain attributes, which are age, caste, disability, ethnicity, gender identity and expression, nationality, race, immigration status, religion, sex, gender, sexual orientation, victims of a major violent event and their kin, and veteran status. YouTube give specific examples of what one must not say about anybody with these attributes, just so you're in no doubt at all as to what they feel about the subject. But their guidelines contain some pretty bizarre restrictions. One that is prohibited on pain of being banned is for saying attribute noted above is just a form of mental illness that needs to be cured. In other words, if you were to say that somebody's religion was a form of mental illness or that their gender identity um, dysphoria was a form of mental illness, this is really weird. I happen to believe in God, whom I worship. Some people, Richard Dawkins springs immediately to mind, view religion as a mental illness, a form of mass hysteria or delusional psychosis. Now, I strongly disagree with this hypothesis, but I'm not about to start cowering away in terror and accusing Richard Dawkins of hate speech. Why shouldn't he say such a thing? It's a perfectly reasonable position to take and I'm only too happy to debate the subject. YouTube though have put any such discussions in the category of hate speech and will allow no comments which put forward this opinion. In other words they don't really want people to discuss atheism and religion. Consider also the question of transsexualism. Until recently, Dr Richard Green was head of the Gender Identity Clinic at Charing Cross Hospital in London. For those that don't know, the uh, Charing Cross Gender Identity Unit is one of the world's leading centres on uh, the subject of gender dysphoria, what used to be called transsexualism. Richard Green was an American. I've read quite a few of his books. He was one of the world's leading experts on this subject, and yet he wrote a book called Sexual Identity Conflict in Children and Adults. In this, he outlined ways that boys who felt themselves to be girls could be helped to come to terms with their actual gender, by which he meant they should be encouraged to see themselves as boys and not girls. In short, he saw the belief that one belongs to a different gender to one's body as a mental problem which could be cured. One suspects that if Richard Green, who was perhaps the greatest name uh, in the 
late 20th century connected with gender identity had not died two years ago, he would have run the risk of being banned for hate speech if he tried to express his views on YouTube. The thing which got me banned for a week was a violation of something else which is given as a specific example in the community guidelines. I quote, People with attributes noted above are less intelligent than us because their brains are smaller. This is something which will get you banned. It's um, something you mustn't say. So it's hard to know how to discuss this without running the risk of being further banned. Here's a book published by the um, London's Natural History Museum. It's not really a kid's book. It's for the average inquiring adult. It's about archaic humans, which is to say Homo erectus, Neanderthals and so on. A theme which runs through this book is that of increasing brain size and a corresponding increase in intelligence. The two are, according to this book and everybody else who writes about paleoanthropology, inextricably linked. The bigger the brain, the greater the intelligence. For example, we read here, where are we now? No doubt Neanderthals were strong people, but this did not mean that they had limited intelligence. In fact, their brains were as large as a modern person's brain. Now, this explicitly links brain size with intelligence. If, however, I were to pursue this idea into the modern world and start discussing it, uh, in connection with present-day anthropology and discuss cranial capacity, for example, which is to say brain size, I would surely find this video being removed. This is thoroughly unscientific. I'll go further. It is anti-scientific. It is an idiosyncratic view that YouTube maintain in defiance of all scientific view on anthropology from the origin of the human race to the present day. I've given just two examples of the way in which YouTube seeks to prevent free discussion on religion, anthropology and human sexuality. There are dozens more. I understand how this closing down of debate is being undertaken. What is not clear to me yet is why this is being done.